All right, let's go to uh, lesson 3-9, part B, okay? This is, again, step functions, and we're going to continue on and talk a little bit more about something called the greatest integer function. Here's the formal definition. We've got a new form of notation here, too. Um, it's, it's an x that's kind of looks like it's in a little broken box, okay? This notation means the greatest integer function. And what it does is it generates the greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. All right, let's take a look, a look at a couple examples. Let's say we have the greatest integer function of 2 and 3 fourths, okay? What is the greatest integer that is less than or equal to 2 and 3 fourths? Well, we want to go down to the, the, the closest we can get, but still be a little bit smaller than 2 and 3 fourths, but we have to be an integer. So, hmm, we're just going to move down. The closest integer to this that's smaller is 2. All right, how about the greatest integer of 7? Well, hmm, let's see here. 7. The greatest integer that's less than or equal to x. x 7 is an integer itself. So the greatest integer of 7 is just 7. All right, let's try a negative. Negative 2. The greatest integer function of negative 2, well, poof, by George again, that's an integer already. So the greatest integer of negative 2 would be negative 2. And finally, what if we took um, negative 3 point, how about 6, okay? Negative 3.6. Now, is that going to be, is that going to go to negative 3 or is it going to go to negative 4? Ugh. I don't know. Let's see here. Uh -huh. The greatest integer that is less than or equal to x. I need to find an integer that is less than negative 3.6. Okay, that's going to have to go down to negative 4 because negative 4 is smaller than negative 3. In fact, if we went and put negative 3.1 in here, that is also going to go down. The closest integer that is smaller than this is negative 4. Again, because negative 4 is smaller than negative 3. All right, well now let's see. What would the graph of this look like? We know it's going to be a step function, but oh, let's see. Well, let's just start somewhere. Let's start here at positive 1. Okay, if I put in a 1 for x, the greatest integer of 1 would be 1. So we're going to have a dot right there. Now, look, if I put in any number in between here, like 1.1, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5, 1 1.9, 1 1.9, anything except for 2. I cannot put 2 in. But I can come infinitesimally close to 2, and it'll still, this function will still take us down to 1. All right, well, let's see here now. Okay, right up to, but not including the 2. So we got to put an open circle on the 2 and we'll connect it like that. So the greatest integer of all these numbers will go jump back down to 1 until we get to 2. Then when we are right at 2 it's going to jump on up here. If I put a 2 in here the greatest integer of 2 is 2 and the same thing's going to happen. All of these numbers in between here their greatest integer will be 2 until we get to 3 and so on. Well, now let's see what happens on this side of the graph. Okay, what if we're at zero? The greatest integer of zero would be zero. And any of these values in here would also go down to zero except for one. Okay, now what if we're in negative territory? What if we are at negative one itself? The greatest integer of negative one would be negative one. So there'll be a dot right there, solid dot, and any of these, like um, negative a half, would go down to negative one. Negative 0.7 would go down to negative one. Negative 0.1 would go down, but zero itself goes to zero. So we're seeing the exact same thing happening on this side as well.
Once again, it does pass the vertical line test, just like the preceding example. So it is a function. All right, now here's a cool experiment. This is really, really cool. I want you to put this program onto your calculator, try it out, execute it after you've got it in there, and see what it does. It may, it's probably going to surprise you. It's really neat, just four little lines. Um, the first line after you've set up your new program is the label A. Labeling A marks the spot in the program. It marks the spot, it just calls it A. And um, then the next line, uh, you need to hit program and go to in I slash O or input output. And we're going to input N. And what that will do when you execute is cause the computer to stop and it'll give you a question mark and it'll wait for you to enter your own data. Then you're going to display the greatest integer function of n, the number that was plugged in, plus 5 tenths. And then it'll go back to a. It'll come back here, it'll repeat the process again, it'll let you enter another number, and so on and so on. You can do this forever. Okay? So figure out how to get this on your particular graphing calculator and play with this. I want you to stop the video right now and do this. This is cool. Labeling A marks the spot in the program. It marks the spot. It just calls it A. And um, then the next line, uh, you need to hit program and go to in I slash O or input output. And we're going to input N. And what that will do when you execute is cause the computer to stop and it'll give you a question mark and it'll wait for you to enter your own data. Then you're going to display the greatest integer function of n, the number that was plugged in, plus 5 tenths. And then it'll go back to a. It'll come back here, it'll repeat the process again, it'll let you enter another number, and so on and so on. You can do this forever. Okay? So figure out how to get this on your particular graphing calculator and play with this. I want you to stop the video right now and do this. This is cool. Come on. Shout out to Adam. Apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur.